What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 92L that is currently organizing and developing in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. As of right now, this will likely be our last Cape Verde setup for the hurricane season at this current point. We're also paying attention to some models that are looking at potential development in the Gulf of Mexico and potentially the Caribbean Sea. As time continues to go on, conditions have started to really ramp up, uh, ramp up and become a lot more favorable for development, especially uh, south of uh, of the Greater Antilles and the Caribbean Sea. So we'll have to keep an eye on all of that stuff going forward. And that's the situation we have. Here's the situation we have, according to the National Hurricane Center as of right now. We have Invest 92L currently out right now. Here's the situation. Showers and thunderstorms are beginning to show signs of organization in association with a low-latitude tropical wave located several hundred miles south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development of the system, and a tropical depression is likely to form by midweek while it moves westward to west northwestward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. 40% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. 80% chance of formation in the next seven days. So this is definitely something I'm going to continue to be paying attention to. However, my main focus is now on the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico, primarily due to, uh, due to two factors. Number one, climatologically, you start seeing a transition away from these Cape Verde setups that we see, uh, we see usually in late August into September and start seeing more tropical systems start to organize and develop either in the Caribbean Sea ma mainly or the Gulf of Mexico. That's number one. Number two, recent models have been picking up on potential areas of some of development at this current point. So that's stuff that we need to continue to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. And as we continue to get into this increasingly active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. Be sure to use the code predictor for 50% off your first month. They've been helping me out make these videos for such a, a while now, so really shout out to them. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the uh, big stuff. We have some ensemble models and some regular models that we're going to go ahead and show you. We're going to go ahead and start with the operational models. Here's the European to really start with. Europeans been kind of picking up on Invest 92L out in the Atlantic Ocean, starting to have it gradually organize and develop, although the European doesn't really have much uh, happening until about 120 hours out when things potentially start to organize. But even still, if the European is calling for this to be a weak tropical cyclone at best according to the, uh, to the Zero Z Europe, uh, European model before getting absorbed with a little bit of a trough sy uh, system right there. Meanwhile, I'm also paying attention to something else that's going to be happening. Uh, the Europeans have been picking up on some potential activity going on in the western Gulf of Mexico. As we're looking at a potential low pressure system set up right there, whether it's subtropical or tropical, it's going to be bringing, uh, bringing a potential threat to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida in the next four days or so. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on, because even if this thing does not become tropical, there's, thing, there's going to be a pretty big flood threat according to what we're looking at from the European model at this current time. So that's something we need to continue to keep an eye on as well. So that's the European. Next thing we're showing you is the GFS. GFS has been very interesting to say at the very least. Here's the GFS. The GFS has this Invest 92L out here just kind of organizing, developing, actually strengthening rather quickly into maybe a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane before entering less favorable conditions and things start to really unravel and gradually weaken as it starts to get absorbed with that low pressure system over there. However, there are two areas the GFS is paying attention to at this current point. The first area, which is in the Gulf of Mexico, brings a potentially a lot of rain and a, lot, a potential tropical low from pretty much the entire Gulf Coast, including including Tex uh, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into Florida. And some of these rains could be to, uh, uh, could lead to a lot of flash flooding according to what the GFS is calling for. So that's going to be pretty interesting how that plays out, and we'll have to see if that ends up developing it into a, a tropical system or not. The second area of interest I'm paying attention to is down here in the Caribbean Sea, where the GFS and its latest run was picking up on a potential tropical system starting to organize and develop about 9 to 10 days out, although the low pressure system arguably is there about f uh, 5 to 6 days out. It just takes some time to organize and develop. And then things start to uh, really in uh, intensify as we continue to get to 12 and then 13 days out. And then we start to see a low pressure system starting to re really organize and develop. Gets down to a pretty strong hurricane before making landfall in Cuba. And then a 
approaching Florida 384 hours out. Keep in mind, this is 16 days out. This is most likely highly unreliable at this current point. It is something I am watching primarily due to the climato uh, climatology behind all this and due to the fact that October hurricanes generally do start to organize and develop in the Caribbean Sea. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm not saying it will, but this is something that I need to continue to keep an eye on and we'll have to wait and see for future model runs down the road. So that's what we have with the GFS model at this current point. And we'll dive further into this with the ensemble models. Next thing we're showing you is the CMC. CMC has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. CMC is showing that Invest 91L is going to, not 91L, 92L is going to be really organizing and developing, potentially strengthening into a minimal hurricane before, start, before weakening and moving into unfavorable conditions. Meanwhile, if we pay attention to this in the Western Gulf, Mexico, similar to the European and GFS, it could potentially bring a huge flash flooding threat down the road. However, the CMC is giving it a better shot of it potentially organizing into a tropical low pressure system, whether it's a tropical depression, a tropical storm, or maybe even a tropical cyclone at that point. So definitely something we need to monitor going forward. Either way, it's still going to be bringing a lot of flash flooding and a huge flooding threat to much of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, especially the Florida Panhandle, into, into the Carolinas and Georgia. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues continues to go on. The CMC is also uh, picking up on some potential tropical development due to a gyre out here in the uh, in the Atlant in the Caribbean Sea rather. The low pressure system really starts to uh, really uh, starts to show its, itself about five to six days out, similar to that of the GFS system, actually. So we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out uh, down the road. So that's what we have going on with the CMC model at this current point. Next model we are showing you is the NavGem model at that point the nav gem has been pretty uh, pretty interesting it's been really the first one that really called for this uh, invest 92l to really ramp up and explode in intensity at this point it's, well 92l is gradually well not even gradually it's quickly organizing and developing as we speak the nav gem gets this down to a 990 millibar category one hurricane and then it gets down to the 980s about, uh, about 150 hours out before moving into more unfavorable conditions and it kind of just stagnates and fluctuates in pressure either way that's a category Category one hurricane at this current point, and the Navgem is also paying attention to this all this potential uh, tropical s stuff that's going on in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially bringing a lot of flooding, maybe even some tropical development at this current point. So that's something we need to keep an eye on at this at this time, because even if this thing does not organize into a tropical storm or potentially into a, hur a hurricane, which it's very unlikely that's going to happen at this point, it's still going to bring a lot of flooding to potentially a lot of areas in the deep south. So that's what we have with the NavGem. Last model we're showing you is that of the Icon. Icon has continued to show uh, signs of organization and development, uh, at least uh, in the eastern Atlantic at this current point. The eastern Atlantic, is, uh, this thing is strengthening up to a, tropi a tropical storm strength, and then, it's, uh, then it just kind of stagnates and kind of just starts weakening as it moves into more unfavorable conditions. Meanwhile, similar situation to that of the European GFS and CMC, potential tropical development, uh, that could potentially bring a lot of impacts to the deep south once again. So definitely something to keep an eye on as time continues to go on, especially for those low-laying areas that are more prone to fl uh, to flooding, especially in Louisiana and uh, and and the uh, and in the Panhandle of Florida. So that's what we have going on with all the operational models. We're going to go ahead and briefly show you the conditions that we're looking at, and then we'll go ahead and show you some ensemble models to kind of give you a better understanding. This is what we have going on with the conditions. Extremely warm global sea temperatures, 30 plus degrees Celsius. The, air, the temperatures across the northern Leeward Islands have cooled off a little bit. However, the Caribbean remains completely stable. Gulf Mexico, we're still seeing a bit of a, a cool off at this current point, but uh, but potential potential development the conditions there are absolutely not out of the question at this current point meanwhile uh, meanwhile still it's all the, already still very very warm very record breaking temperatures even into october at this current point these waters are going to take a couple of months to cool down and once they do cool down we'll have to see how co cold they get and how warm they do get for the next hurricane season which we'll get we'll get to in the next few months so that's what we have with the waters ocean heat content continues to be pumping out a lot of OHC at this current point, especially in the western half of the MDR, all the way through the Caribbean Sea. This is why I am so concerned about tropical development, because there is areas of way, well over 200 OHC across a lot of these areas at this current point. 
one, uh, 175 OHC across uh, pretty much uh, the area between Nicar Honduras and Cuba and all going all the way to the Dominican Republic. 150 OHC pretty much through the entire Caribbean Sea at this current point. And that's why I'm so concerned about it because there's so much and this is so record-breaking that it's just at this point... Um, how do I put this lightly? Anything that organizes and is able to organize quickly is going to potentially rapidly intensify through the water uh, temperatures and how deep these waters are. And now taking a look at the wind shear, Gulf Mexico, not very su uh, supportive of it development at this current point. And then but, uh, everywhere, pretty much everywhere else in the Atlantic south of of this whole of this of this huge uh, jet, a huge trough and ridge at this point very favorable for development across the Caribbean Sea across the main development region so we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out because European was dead on when it came to the wind shear weakening and just collapsing for this uh, at least the southern half of the Atlantic so that's what we have with the models. Last thing we're showing you is we're going to show you some ensemble models. Here's the European ensemble at this current point right here. Here's the European ensemble right here. This is the 6Z right here. Showing really some signs of uh, of development out here in, and with Invest 92L. However, the Europeans also showing some potential signs of tropical development going on in the subtropical Atlantic. That's pretty interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on it. And But already... We're seeing at least three to uh, three to five, maybe even more ensembles of some potential tropical development in the western Gulf of Mexico, according to what we are seeing with the European ensembles. GFS ensembles, once again, are very interesting. Similar situation, actually. We're seeing a lot more ensembles of some tropical development firing up across parts of the Gulf and then into the subtropical Atlantic. And then we start to see uh, increasing ensembles of something potentially happening in the Caribbean Sea, uh, starting ab about, like, what is this? About 10 days out. So taking that with take that with a grain of salt, but the they are on to something. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. Last thing we're showing you is the GP uh, G, uh, EPS ensembles. That's the CMC's uh, Canadian model ensemble at the at uh, that we're looking at. CMC Ensemble has 92L just kind of just doing its own thing. While it is showing some potential ensembles of tropical developments happening in the Gulf of Mexico in the next five days. And it's also showing some tr uh, tr potential tropical development. Increasing ensembles, actually. I'd say this is like, what, like 10 ensembles about 100, uh, 276 hours out that's showing something happening. I'm taking this with a grain of salt considering how spread out these are and how far out these are. But uh, these ensembles are like, uh, time-wise. However, it's something that cannot be ruled out at this current time. And we'll have to continue to keep you an, uh, updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends at Prestige Weather Consulting for 50% off your first month using the code PREDICTOR. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.